What's up? How's it going? Welcome to Dave's Watch Channel. And for this video, I'm going to be talking about anything but Rolex. All right, no, no Rolex for this video. All right, and I'm going to, you know, give you my opinions on other really great watches that you got to consider if you, you know, if you're not really, if you don't want to play the Rolex game, you don't want to overpay, you don't want to pay over list, you don't want to get on the, you know, on the waiting list and. You don't want any of that nonsense, but you want a really fine, respectable timepiece on your wrist, right? Maybe this video will help you. Now, my number one brand outside of Rolex will have to be JLC, right? And what's what's JLC known for? Well, is the reversal, right? The, the the JLC reversal. So I use Watch Recon. You know, it's a fantastic search engine for watches, and. Um, just you know, everyone list that watches over here and this is really where I um, I get my information from and just look at all these reversals where right? the the grand tie right is your very standard reversal it's big size reversal it's a beautiful watch the grand tie you know forty eight hundred dollars what can you get for forty eight hundred dollars from Rolex for I I don't know what can you get for forty eight hundred. Maybe a a date just. No, this is. I'm sorry. The re the reversal is just way, um, way. It's a much. It's a classier piece. It's more unique. It's so much more interesting than a than a simple date just. Right. A date just is a great watch, but you know you can't really compare it to to a reversal. Right. A reversal is an icon. Right. So consider the reversal. All right, it's a fantastic watch, right? beautiful watch. Right, you look at the Master Control series. It's another great line of watches. If you want something more dressy for work attire, for formal events, functions, I mean, look at it. That's just class, you know. The JLC Manual Wine 38 mil. That's stunning. I bet you can even see. Look at that movement. It's a little small, huh? but it's a beautiful watch, you know. Look at this. What can you get from Rolex at four thousand? You really can't get anything anymore. Maybe, maybe an Oyster Perpetual. But look at look at the JLC reversal, the Master Control. You can look at the, you know, you want something which makes some noise, literally makes some noise on your wrist. Check out the Memovox. Right, these are alarm watches. They have tribute watches. Oh, I really love the. I really love this piece. My God, look at that, that's stunning. The Deep Sea. Deep Sea is a beautiful, beautiful watch. These, these watches have really held, held their own. You know, the prices have really held steady. 12875 now that's not cheap, but you know whoever bought these watches back then, it still held its value. These are beautiful, beautiful watches. The Memovox, you know, the, the Tribute, it's a great piece. Now look at that, JLC Polaris Memovox. Right, just, just amazing watch. Okay, now let's um, let's venture out of JLC and let's go check out IWC Portuguese. Let's go IWC. All right. It's a great watch, right? Great brand, a bit soft right now. Um, what would I recommend? Oh, look at this aqua timer, right? As opposed to a Submariner. Right, it's a great watch. It's a good looking watch. You know, it's forty two mil, a little, you know, it's a little on the big side, the size of a sea dweller. Uh, you have, of course, IWC is known for their Portuguese. It's known for the pilot watches. You got marks, I don't know, fifteen all the way to eighteen. Uh, they're not crazy money. Um, I always liked this UTC. So this is, uh, I guess this is their version of a GMT. And uh, $3,000, you know. What can you get for $3,000 from Rolex? Absolutely. You get a, a, a beat-up vintage Datejust 1603. That's what you get. Maybe not even. <laughs> You don't get much from Rolex for, for three thousand, right? This, I mean, watches like this just kind of show you how inflated Rolex really is, right? Because 
you know, the, the finish and the quality and the build quality of, you know, I own the IWC Portuguese and it's really up there with Rolex in terms of, um, you know, aesthetics and, and exterior finishing. Okay, the movement is not as great as a Rolex, right? That's where IWC takes a hit, right? Take, you know, that's where you can knock on the brand is that they don't really use... Um, oh, but look at this. I, the engineer, oh, it's Reddit, that uses an in-house movement. I don't know. All right, so you can take a look at engineers, the, the aqua timers, the Portuguese, the pilot watches, you got options at IWC. All right, so there you go, you know, really great buying from this brand. Uh, what else do we have? We have the, the Breitling Navitimer, another icon in horology where you can look for a vintage Navitimer. I really love the vintage Navitimers. Look at this, what is this, $5,000? Uh, not a big fan of this date over here. It would have been better if it was just the sub dials. And uh, what else is there? You know, what do I really like? I like the old Navi timers. Yeah, something like this. You know, beautiful, beautiful watch. Look at it. That's just class. That's stunning. You know. Oh shit, guys, my. Laptop is a uh, my MacBook from 2010 is starting to make some noise. I don't know how long this video will last for. Okay, okay, let's make it quick. All right, uh, let's take a look at the Monaco. That's another great watch that I really love. Now, if you go, for, holy crap! Look at this guy, vintage 70s Hoya Monaco. Man, this how much is he asking for? 27,000 US dollars. Man, 10 years ago, this was this was probably going for only about 10,000, 10, 10,000 10, US dollars. Oh, wow, this has tripled and really held its own, uh, the vintage Monaco. Great watch. You know what? Oh, man, I, if there was one brand that I really wish made it through the quartz crisis, it would have to be Hoyer because some of their watches were just simply stunning. Um, you know, the, the Hoyer Monaco, the Octavia. They're just beautiful, beautiful watches. All right, look at this one. This is really nice. Uh, this is the modern one, the Tag Hoyer Monaco, Steve McQueen edition. This would be the Tag Heuer that I would buy. The Heuer Monaco Steve McQueen. They really executed it very, very well. Um, not too sure about the movement, but it is a beautiful watch. I really, really like it. Damn, maybe I should... Maybe I should uh, actually get in touch with this guy. He's from Canada too. I've never... Oh, should I? Damn, guys, what do you think? What do you think? Should I pull the trigger on this Hoya Monaco Steve McQueen edition? I'm tempted. I'm tempted. I think I'm going to. I'm going to get in touch with this guy. He's from Canada as well, so I think we can maybe make a deal. And uh, let's see what happens. Wow, where is he in Calgary? Oh, I really love the the Hoya Monaco. It's such a cool, funky watch. Oh. All right, so there you go, the Hoya Monaco, Tech Hoya's Monaco right now. now. Let's take a look at the Zenith. Zenith is also another brand, eh, not too big on Zenith, you know, they're, they're okay. The El Primero Chronographs and, uh, oh, look at that. The Zenith Daytona White Dot, well, full set, 32,000, 28,000, what is this? Holy smokes, look at the. Daytona Zenith, 18 karat gold. Wow. Oh, 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 shoot. This is, this video is not, is, is, sorry guys, I got, just got sidetracked on Rolex, right? No Rolex, right? We're here to look at Zenith. We're just here to look at Zenith. And, oh man, look at that black dial, five digit Daytona. Oh, <laughs> oh man, okay. All right, all right, I can't do Zenith. All I see are the Daytonas. Okay, sorry guys, I can't do Zenith. 
All right. So anyway, there you go. Right, you got how many watches that I gave you. Of course, you gotta take a look at the Omega Speedmaster. I'm not sure if I covered that one, but you know, it's not a Rolex. Um, great watches, and to be honest, I think the Speedmasters are are a little bit expensive. All right, that's just my opinion. I mean, when I started collecting, you know, these watches would only be going for about twenty five hundred tops. And now they're all going for 3,800, 4,000. So the Speedmasters are no longer a cheap watch, right? They've, um, they've also gone up in price, gone up in value, and rightfully so. You know, it's a true icon. Um, I think if you're looking for a chronograph, the best buys would have to be like the IWC Portuguese or the Breitling Navitimer. The Speedmaster, they are a great watch too. You know, you want one, just go get one. But in my humble opinion, the value buying it would be the IWC Portuguese, the Breitling Navitimer, maybe a Hoyer Mona, the Navitimer and the Portuguese. Right, I think those two watches are are better buying than the than the Speedmaster for now. For now, right? Speedmaster have gone up in uh, have also uh, slightly inflated. Okay. Anyway, guys, you know, thanks for watching. Uh, I hope. You found this video uh, of life outside Rolex helpful and informative. Okay. Anyway, I'm out. Thanks for watching. Bye.